G'day folks. Well, I'll give you a little bit of an update as I'm going along with this cleanup. Uh, as you can see, the uh, sort of back passageway is now a passageway, not just junk everywhere. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to end up blocked again because I've got to put that Datsun engine back in there. Probably not without a test run first. I'm curious as to whether or not the carburetor's happy. I ran some fuel through it last night, like cranked, cranked it till the bowl filled up and I got a couple of pops out the exhaust and it's just been sitting, so I'm hoping this new BP fuel will dissolve any glaze that's in there and it'll run again. Because that was the problem I had last time. I left uh, United fuel in it too long and it's just made a mess. So whoever buys it will uh, have fun cleaning it up. Overall, it's not a bad engine. I did notice it was sticking a valve at one point too. The compression sound on cranking just didn't sound even anymore. So I think it just needs a good run. Typical of a uh, backyard engine, I guess you'd call it. But yeah, the carburetor was covered when it was stored, but there's spider webs and things still in there. Yeah, not a bad engine overall. And likewise, the Westinghouse frame is out, and that'll be one of my main focuses once I've got the new tool cabinet and everything set up. Now that it's out, it's staying out. I'll just park it over there or whatever. I'll move the armature out to the carport for the time being. Uh, the armature still needs to be polished, so I'll mount a gearbox and motor to that trolley and just spin it slowly and just polish the uh, bearing journals and the commutator bars and things and then it can be uh, hoisted into position not too hard but yeah weather's not being kind to me and I have another air conditioner to play with <laughs> I can't resist old air conditioners especially the really old ones I've never seen one of these before it's made by STC Australia uh, it's got <laughs> rotating oh movable vents, diffusers, they're kind of neat. Kind of neat. Uh, I'd put it at maybe 60s vintage. It is a heat pump so it's not early early, it's not R12. It'll be R22. Start capacitor 240 volt 50 cycles. I haven't noticed the term Hertz used in this one as uh, Oh, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Oleg. He was saying uh, the term Hertz came in after 63 or something. So this might be an early 60s or even late 50s model. I'm not sure when R12, R R22 came in for heat pumps, but it'd be around that time. Because everything on the, all the frequency on this is measured in cycles per second, not Hertz. And likewise the wiring sort of. It looks like someone's done a bit of wiring work on it. Like they've replaced a lot of the old cloth flex but I can see there's a nest of it down there which looks wet so if I plug this in now it's probably going to trip the RCD uh, yeah I might get the heat gun out and dry it out and that's probably a defrost element too that's probably why it's got that high temperature insulation on it it's not a big coil either it's four layers though and the fan draws air in there and pushes it out this way so it's hard to tell if it's blocked or not there's only one way to find out I guess I'll take the top cover off it seems to have stopped raining <laughs> it's one thing old plasma TVs are good for is the front front panels make good covers and shields. That's Sydney, New South Wales. It's all been painted over. I'll strip the paint off that and see what it says. Definitely old. That's good though. Old stuff's always good. Hmm, really is something this unit. It's got an Australian built Tecumseh compressor in it. One of the most odd looking ones I've ever seen. I have seen them before though. Yeah, it's all obscured. Can't really tell what it's got rated it and on it. Capacitor is a 30 microfarad 415 volt Ducon capacitor. These ones contain polychlorinated biphenol. Don't mess with them. Actually replace them. I'm going to replace all of these if this unit's any good. Same with the fan one, that's also PCB filled dangerous stuff and they usually, at this age, once they get hot, they usually have a habit of blowing up like my old galvanator did one day. That was pretty evil. So what have we got? We've got discharge, no. Oh, it's capillary line coming out of there, that's liquid out. It goes all the way around the coil, or under. Yeah, so liquid comes out, comes back up through here, and out through there. There's a charging point. Um, that's discharged from the compressor. 
Yeah, going through the reversing valve. Everything's very tightly packed. It's all crammed in here. Blower box. I think this wiring's going to be the main letdown of this unit. Because it's pretty nasty. And I can just see my RCD tripping out as soon as I connect this thing. It's worth a try though. Computers are on a UPS, so I can't lose anything. Yeah, see, someone's been messing around with it, but not much. It's all this old fan wiring. This is the fan fan speed switch in here. And that just looks really bad. And it's wet too. It's been full of water and mud. Now oh, there's a the plate. Yeah, R22, less than two pounds. Doesn't tell you exactly how much. Fan horsepower, one-fifth. Compressor horsepower, 1.5. I might give it a light wash and uh, work on this fan wiring before I uh, plug it in. Because that's rather nasty down in there. That's going to be an uh, earth leakage short, more than likely anyway. It's the insulation on this stuff. There is a hard insulation in there, but I think it's pretty well broken down. Although, what's that? Oh, that's PVC. Well, I might get away with it. It looks like old cloth and rubber coated stuff, but that there oh, yeah it is it is rubber <laughs> yeah this thing's bad even if I unplug the fan for now and give it a try afterwards see if the compressor runs first that's the main thing if this compressor is dead this whole thing's a dead duck we can part it out for scrap okay let's see what this does on fan only I'm gonna give the fan wiring the benefit of the doubt and see what happens uh, yeah, at least before the weather gets any worse, I just want to find out what this thing's going to do. So, here goes nothing. Nothing. Hang on, master breaker. Not on. Yeah, it's working. The fan's rubbing on the housing a bit, but that's okay, we'll fix that. Let's run a new temporary lead in there. So it pulls air through the condenser and out over the compressor. Okay, let's try... I'm not going to be able to get it to cool today, at least not very easy anyway. Shouldn't keep that around there either. Even though the mains, main switch breaks both poles, I don't like having a thermostat probe right near a live terminal. Where is that plastic terminal box? There it is. really. <laughs> I think it's going to make things worse. No, nope. thermostat probe can stay over there. It's not the best design the way that's set out. Anyway, let's go. I know you're not supposed to start it in heat, but I don't believe this one's been upside down or anything. It's stuck. Heat. Heat. Cool heat, heat, cool high heat. So that's high heat. That should be off. And that's exhaust or something. It's not going over though. There are control cables and other various things in there for exhaust vents. That's a control cable, I think, for the vent. Yep. Oh, let's try this compressor on. <laughs> it's working. working. <laughs> I 
<laughs> see the frost just disappear. Yeah, she's still got a good charge in it too. That came up pretty quick. It's a shame the fan's blowing all this air over the uh, discharge tubing because ideally this needs to be lagged in Armaflex or something because that's dissipating heat which could be going to the indoor coil. Um, just a design flaw more than anything else. That's about all it is. It's a design flaw because the um, Kelvinator ones don't have air blowing over the compressor as much and this is all lagged in your Armaflex. So once you uh, discharge high, no sorry, um, where's the high temp coming out? That side, that's got to be lagged, that's getting cool, pre-cooled before it can uh, go to the coil. This side's not so bad, that's the suction side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's alright. This should stay cool anyway, but this one here, even though it's a short run, it's still going to be losing heat. But that and that are okay. In summertime it's even better because then you're rejecting a bit of extra heat off whatever's coming back. But it's an odd, odd way it's designed. I suppose the good thing is the compressor's probably still alive because it's had such good fan cooling. If it didn't, it'd probably be dead by now. Hmm. It's an odd bowl thing, but since it's raining I'm going to uh, put the cover back on it and leave it for a little bit later. Probably another day. But yeah, good test. <laughs> not, not a bad unit.